Welcome, welcome to Ruben's Pet World TV. Today in K9 Conversation, we have the amazing Mr. Puerto Rico and his dad today with us. And we're going to learn a little bit about Mr. Puerto Rico. A lot of people have been asking, who is this little guy that's going to compete? Compared to last year, uh, Mr. Puerto Rico, that was a giant poodle, a standard poodle. Today, we have the total opposite. We have a chihuahua. He's tiny and small compared to Anubis from last year, but he's a powerhouse, okay? Don't let the little guy fool you, guys, because he has a lot of tricks under his paws, and I'm, his daddy is very, very talented, and you have to keep an eye on him. So let's welcome Mr. Puerto Rico to uh, K9 Conversation. Welcome, Mr. Puerto Rico. Welcome, Hector. How are you guys? Hello. How are you doing? Sorry, say hello. Mm -hmm. We're doing great. We're excited. I was waiting for, I've been waiting for this interview for a while. Yeah, and he's excited. Um, me, not because I'm Puerto Rican. <laughs> Let's make that clear. So you can Just see because I enjoy, I know Sonny uh, in person. Um, he's a big competitor, not only uh, this time in the Miss Universe, but also he participates in many of the events in Halloween. Um, they win a lot of prizes, guys. So that's why he's a good competitor. So tell us, how are you guys preparing for this uh, competition? It's your first time, so how are you guys handling everything? So this is the first Miss Universe that we're doing. Last year, I put my little, my other chihuahua. They're both, they were, they're both deer head chihuahuas, which means their head, their, their snout is very long. Now my doorbell is ringing, so I'm sorry. Hopefully it's a package and they'll leave it there. <laughs> it's um, okay, so, we're alive. <laughs> so this little baby, I got two of them, but unfortunately last year I put the little girl in because I wanted to put the dresses and the crowns and all that stuff, but she passed away in February. So now I have my little boy and they were both my emotional support dog because I'm a disabled military veteran. And he is like the nicest and calmest dog. We take him everywhere. Is He's not the typical chihuahua with this barking at everybody that you saw that the doorbell rang and he's like, whatever. As long as I have this little carrot here that he likes to eat a lot of carrots. And I'm doing it so you guys can see how cute he is. All right, sit down, sit down. So we're, we are on TV. I love you too. So, he's adorable. Um, he's he is adorable. adorable. <laughs> he is one of the most nicest doggy and keeps me calm. And he loves to give me lots of kisses. And uh, I don't know what else to tell you. So I've had him for 11 years. So he's a little old man already, but he doesn't look like a little old man. He's like his daddy that we still look good. No, he, he actually doesn't because you sent me one of the pictures already. You sent in some of the photos. Actually, I fell in love with one of them. I yes. got, I'm, I'm the luckiest guy that I get to see everything first. Uh, yes, <laughs> so I already saw his photo, one of them that you sent me. And actually, you know, you I know you're worried. But he looks great. You should be relaxed because uh, he looks amazing on the photo. He projects very well. Um, yeah. You guys dress him up uh, perfect like he's supposed to. So yeah. I think you, you, you're you stressing a little too much. Just enjoy the ride. <laughs> the, because I saw last year's winner. She was walking on her back legs and doing all these tricks. And he has, <laughs> he has some tricks, but they're not. He doesn't walk around with a purse in his hand. <laughs> no, we understand here at the Miss Universe K9. We understand that not every dog is going is yes. going to walk into paws and do tricks. Uh, so we are aware of that. So that's why we try when it comes to judging the pageant. We try to be fair. We we understand that they are pets, they are animals, and mm -hmm. uh, we work with the talent that God gave them. You know, the natural mm -hmm. talents. They are all usually tend to be more fun. The crazy things that they do around the yes. the house. Those things um, not only show a trick, but also shows the personality of the dog. And I think Sonny is full of personality. Oh, he does. He does. And you know he's what? a sweet boy or he's a grumpy little old man? No, he's a very, very sweet um, little dog. And um, my husband has cancer. And ever since he has cancer, he's been very attached to him. So even though he's my emotional dog, when I get stress or anxiety, whatever he he really calms me down. But now he has this thing with my husband, the same because he feels the the disease that Fabio has. So Yeah, they, they tend anyway. to feel when we are with their owners and parents are down. Those yes. tend to feel the energy. They know that they need extra attention. Like we do to them, they, they give us back yes. that love and attention. Yes. 
And just by being there next to us is more than enough to keep us calm when we're going through hard times. And yeah. a lot of people uh, don't realize that. But they are, besides pets, they are our companions. They are with us at home during the, those difficult times when nobody else is around. There is that little dog sitting next to you telling you to keep going. And mm -hmm. that's what they do. Yeah, now I, I do more with them. I take them out because I'm here alone. I, I'm an artist. So I'm here alone with him. So I take him out a lot. So now he's used to going out more than he did before. Um, and he's just very loving. He's just a very loving dog. Oh, that's, dog. A, that's a great thing. Now, I, I see that he's in good, in very good shape. Do you have any special diet? Do you cook for him or you exercise him? How he keeps in that good shape? Because I see a lot no. of chihuahuas. Uh, sometimes when they get fixed, they get overweight or when they get older. But he seems to be very in very good shape. <laughs> well, what happened was at the beginning, we used to give him a little bit of pizza and a little bit of that. And he started gaining weight. When I took him in, they said, oh, he's already nine pounds, which to me, that wasn't a lot. But they said he has to be at least six or seven. So what happens is both of them had have heart problems. So he has heart problems. So we have to maintain his weight down because of his heart. And also because of his little legs. Chihuahua has very little legs. And they don't realize that their weight does affect their little paws. So if they try to jump or do something, their, their paws can break. Actually, their little legs can break if they fall off the bed or whatever. So what happened was the doctor gave us a special food. It's a diet food that's um, prescribed. And ever since that, he lost a lot of weight. We stopped giving him any because especially because we lost one and I don't know what I'll do with, when I lose this one. I, I don't even want to think about it because we're <laughs> so close. And then they taught us not to give them that milk bone. I, I, I don't know if I should be saying this, but not none of those treats that are out there. I was giving them that, that treat that's green. Um, and <laughs> that actually was um, tearing up his intestines. So you know, that, now that you mention it, um, you notice that this week you follow me on social media. And yeah. you saw my dog, Amun, just got sick this past day. Mm -hmm. And um, I cooked for Amun. I made his chicken with broccoli and, and carrots and apples. I, every week, I make two chickens for him. It lasts about two weeks, a meal's prep. But this week, I went to the supermarket, and I got the little treats from the supermarket, the little box. We don't know going to mention name. <laughs> but you just did. <laughs> I know. I made a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, when I gave that to Amun... I don't know if it was a treat, but uh, that was the only thing I changed on his diet. Yeah. And then he became constipated, and then he had an anal abscess. Yeah. So um, we have to be very careful while we feed our dog, especially changing the diet. But sometimes we try to go from chicken to something else right away, and you don't know what reaction is going to have on them. They're tiny. They can get allergies. They can get uh, stomach sick, diarrhea, all kinds of stuff. <laughs> And bleed. that at the end is going to hit your pocket. <laughs> he used to bleed a lot. And we didn't we didn't understand, you know, scared to wake up in the morning and his weaving pad is full of blood. So we figured out that these these treats were were cutting his intestines because he was eating them but not chewing them to the end like we do. So he was just like swallowing half that thing. So we needed to stop doing that. So now we feed him, which is much healthier. We give him little pieces of carrots. We give him string beans. We give him cucumber. You know, we learned how, what kind of um, <laughs> so that he could be in a Mr. Puerto Rico universe. Concept. Yes, <laughs> in shape, all nice. No, but besides that, I always tell people if you can make the, the meals at home, you can cook for them. If you got that extra time, mm -hmm. I advise everybody to do it. Um, you know what you're giving your pet. You know, when we write this big bags of food and we if I sometimes I look at it and I, I sniff inside to see how it smells there's nothing there <laughs> yeah, the only thing you have to avoid is putting any spices because they don't do well with spices but if you boil chicken and you put broccoli and you put I think they can eat potatoes I've never put potato but I give them broccoli and I give them the carrots and I get anything that's a vegetable you got please research and don't give them like even fruits he doesn't really like strawberry and you can give them strawberry he likes apple, but you can't give him the skin, and you can't give him a lot. So I cut up. And I give apple. everything. Hi, thank you for telling me. <laughs> you give him everything. Yeah, you can't give him all the fruit. There's some fruits that are grapes, for example, are very, um, it get, it's very poisonous. Yeah, there's um, some of them that you really got to stay away from them. 
It's yeah. always good to call you vet. I always tell people, stop going on social media asking for advice. Yes. Because that's the new trend. Everybody, the dog gets sick. Oh, my dog got diarrhea. He's bleeding there. Instead of calling the vet, they're over there waiting for advice on social media, wasting time. And that's a big no-no. So mm -hmm. it's always talk to your vet, ask him, should I give him this? Should I give him that? And um, do your research on social media also, but don't take everything so serious that you see on social media because we don't know what's real. We don't know, you know, people are just saying things just to say it and sometimes they don't make no sense. So we mm -hmm. want to make sure your dogs are always healthy and you give them the right stuff. We all know uh, grapes and chocolates are no-nos. No, and coffee. Coffee and alcohol. <laughs> I knew somebody that used to give them coffee every morning. Not me. But I knew a lady. I'm a coffee drinker. And I have to be careful because I remember my dog, Dana. Dana, she used to climb on my table if I leave my cup of coffee. And she would drink my cup of coffee. Yeah. <laughs> it never happened. I was lucky, but it's not supposed to happen. So every time I have to be aware of where I'm leaving the coffee, where I'm putting this. Not only that, there's people like myself that we work, like you're an artist too. Mm -hmm. And we work with tools and you work with a lot of wood pieces. Sometimes you drop a piece of wood and they may grab it. I, I, I'm a, I saw and I, I do design. Sometimes I drop a needle. And all those things, we got to be very, very careful because dogs yeah. are very curious. Yeah. And, and they can swallow anything. <laughs> I've been lucky with him. You know, he he's he doesn't eat out in the street like when we're walking. If he sees food, he won't eat it. He will go when I'm cooking and something falls, he'll go smell it. But he knows if I say no, he doesn't. But other than that, thank God he doesn't do any of my stuff. He's just not interested, but food he's interested. And we should swap want, dogs for a weekend. <laughs> the, yeah, everyone like the dogs like everything. Is there food? You can take mine for a month. <laughs> yeah, because they look at you with that little sad face, like, just give me a little bit of the pizza. You know, you're like, no, I can't give you the pizza. And he talks to me when I'm eating. It's like a whole conversation, like, uh, I'm here, can I have a little bit? But what I realized of him now, I think he's going a little blind. And I think he's, um, yesterday, Fabio was coming from work, and I just want to surprise Fabio. So I went downstairs. And when he saw him, he started growling and barking at him, which is very strange. I mean, it really bothered him. And he's like, I can't believe. But then I had to pick him up. And then when he smelled him, he would just went crazy. So, I mean, this is something normal that happens in dogs. They're getting older, right? I feel his hearing is going a bit. Sometimes it's selective hearing because when I say treat, <laughs> like automatically goes Exactly. Treat. So I, I, that's how I practice. But sometimes, like I walked in yesterday, and he was looking toward the room like I was in the room. And I kept saying, Sonny, I'm right here, Sonny. And he wouldn't turn around. So, you know, I worry about those little things. But other than that, he's like the nicest thing. And look at him. With this it should be all right. I, I, I've been grooming a lot of dogs that lose their vision over See? the years. And you'd be surprised how animals adjust. It's not like us. Oh, we usually complain about everything. Yeah. <laughs> and they just adjust to the process. When uh, One thing that we always advise people that if their dogs are going blind, try to keep everything in the house in the same place. Yeah. Because this way they are used to navigating at home. So it's easy for them when they are home. Uh, even though they lost their vision, they can still move around and be a normal dog. Yeah. Yeah, but it's, it's, it's normal that they sometimes, you know, they uh they gotta adjust to the sounds of Fabio uh coming home, yeah. the new the steps. Uh so they gotta adjust to the whole environment. Also, we have to adjust to them how we approach mm -hmm. them. Because sometimes we go hug them and they may be scared because they don't see you. So they don't know what's going on, what's coming towards them. And so right. they may react, they may they may nip at you, they may be uh get afraid and run out. So we also have to think about them uh and 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 watch the way we interact with them. I think yeah. that's very important. And I think that's something that you're going to have to experience as you go with your senior dog. Well, you know, he's small. So we're giants next to him, right? So when he sees this big giant coming, of course, autumn, even when he's eating and I walk by, he gets all startled and moved because it's a big person coming toward no, him. And sometimes, uh, sometimes they see the shadows. They may not see the actual person, but they mm -hmm. will see the shadow that there's something there. I, I don't know what it is. But there's something coming towards me, and they will—they may react. Yeah. Yeah. Now, 
So when it comes to the pageant, um, I, which one is the hottest uh, category of the whole competition? So I think uh, the natural, of course, it was cute because he's naturally beautiful. And then the, the gala one was pretty good to work with and, and to take photos of him, he just loved it. And as long as I had that character, he's loving it. Um, I think the, what is it called? The typical, or try it typical. I don't know how to say and it. And then uh, national costume competition. The national costume has been a little difficult because of course, being from Puerto Rico, I want to, of course, do something from Puerto Rico. And I think last year, oh, he just sat down. Look how cute he is with his little sweater. Oh, I oh, love it. Yeah. He has a canine shirt. <laughs> he has his canine shirt. He has his little sash. His, so I need little that. sash, yes. Those are made especially for our competition. The only ones that get that special T-shirt and that special sash is the contestants. Uh, it's just made especially for them. You know, Maria, she does an amazing work yes, when it comes it to the good. sashes. I think she did a great job with the sashes. I mean, love oh, them. She did a wonderful. She did a wonderful job. I love it. I, I think they look it. better in person. <laughs> yes, it's true. So yeah. anyway, the national costume has been hard because I don't. The first yeah. one that came to mind when I looked at last year's is like, oh, that Puerto Rico did it last year. So this year it's been a little bit more difficult because he does not like stuff on his face. So, and like little Chihuahua was very hard to teach him to have stuff on their head because their heads are so small, everything falls off. And even yes. though I put the little things around his ears, the ears, they know how to put it down so it comes off. <laughs> yes, yes. Smart. So costumes, he's okay with putting outfits on him unless you get very, very in his face when you're doing it, which I learned the hard way. Because he's never, he nipped at me for the first time <laughs> this year during the pageant because I was trying to put a bow tie on him and I think he didn't understand why are you trying to choke me? And I was <laughs> holding him and all of a sudden, like he just wanted me to let him go and I did it. So he kind of nipped at me and I, of course, it didn't matter because I knew he was just feeling like I was in his face and in his face, right? Yes, um, yes. Other than that, he is like the, the contest with the, I'm going to try to do my best to make this costume. <laughs> I think you would do fine. I uh, always tell, um, just in case, you can always go back and look at the past Mr. Uh, Mr. World competition, and you can get some idea from the guys that compete there. And also, you can go into the Miss Universe and go back of what they show for Puerto Rico and get some ideas from there. Well, I have an issue with that. You know I have an issue with that? Because you make some awesome costume of Miss Puerto Rico. So I go, like, oh, Ruben already did it for his dog. Oh, Ruben already did it. <laughs> you got to create your own version. You got to give it your own twist to it. And I was like, and you've done some amazing work with these costumes. I mean, God bless you. You are amazing. And I really do uh, enjoy looking at all the outfits at you because you're very, well, The good very thing is that I'm not in the competition, so I'm not judging. So you can let your imagination uh, go. Yes. I think we have, uh, being Puerto Rican and you being Puerto Rican, I think we have uh, a lot of things to create a custom from a lot of culture, yes. a lot of music, a lot of um, artists, a lot of sport people. So you have a big yeah. range of things that you can create. A variety of things that I can do. And you can also be innovative and create your own style. You don't actually have to follow anything you can, I know you're very creative, you're an artist, and I know that mind is always growing, uh, you know, rolling. So I'm sure there's something in there, when time comes, it's just gonna come out. I know, you like that, that minute works and better. And a big long dress. Hey, wow. <laughs> you don't want to traumatize <laughs> Just make sure you have a lot of carrots, a lot of treats for the dogs. Yes, but if it was for me, that's what I would love to do, is put a big old dress like <laughs> And all the other contestants for the females. I'm like, dude, I would love to do something. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's fun, but you know what? Uh, we need boys. I always tell people we yes. need to get the boys more involved. Usually all the pageants that we uh, go, most of the participators, uh, participants are uh, dogs, uh, girls. And yeah. this time we reached nine. Nine boys are in this year and we have 12 girls. Oh, 
Wow, that's a lot. I mean, I've told some friends because they have some nice dog, and you know, we all love our, our dogs, are our family. If somebody comes to my home and says, oh, you have a dog? Okay, you can leave. Because <laughs> it's more important than whoever walks through the door. My mother could come here through that door and say, oh, well, you have a dog? I'm like, okay, you gotta go. Because <laughs> I go to a hotel next, <laughs> down the block. <laughs> go, go to my brother's house or something because this, they are your children. They're, ch they're your children. I love going out, even though I don't go out now a lot, but if I go out the door, he, he's going to go crazy because it's like he knows I'm going to go. So now he's learned how to talk after the sister died. So he lets me know when he wants to go out, which he never, he howls. Like, I mean, it sounds like he's saying, let's go in Spanish. I recorded it one day. He's like, Vamos! Vamos! funny. And, um, and he just loves now talking to you. Like, we understand. I have a, a thing for him to come up the, to the sofa that I made for him. And sometimes my foot is in the way because I'm at the sofa. And he will talk to me like, mm, mm, like I want to come up and, and you're in my way. And we've learned, we have a whole conversations with it. Like he knows, we know kind of like what he's saying to us. And I think it's like, like women when they have their babies and the baby goes, cool. And they're like, oh, she wants her bottle. I'm like, how do you know? You know how do you know that? You get to learn their language and how they are. Yeah, because you are interacting with him every day. So yeah. at some point, you get to know your dog so well that you you know how he's feeling, what he's trying to communicate with you. Um, they make sounds. They make uh, do gestures, jump around, all kinds of stuff. So if you pay attention to your dog, if you are good parents and you're always there with your pet, mm -hmm. paying attention to him, you're going to learn his language. He, they may not speak like us, communicate the same way, yeah, but absolutely. they do communicate with you. They let you know how they're feeling. They let you know if I don't like this. They let you know when they want to go, when they're uncomfortable. And all of that, you learn as time goes, um, that you spend more time with your pet, you get to learn that extra. And that builds that connection so strong. Yes. That's, that's a big, uh, that's a very strong connection that you're going to get the opportunity to build with your dog. And I think that's amazing. I was watching a show uh, on TV where in a few more years, dogs will be able to tell us what they think. And I'm sure they can. They, I mean, and I, I say, ah, hell no. <laughs> yes, I, say, I don't want to know me. what my dog is thinking. <laughs> give me a brother. Give me another dog. <laughs> I don't, I don't like that, the artificial intelligence stuff. No. No, that's you know, a, dog. It's a whole different topic. Level. Not only so, that, because, I, you know, like many pet owners, we share secrets with our dogs that we don't share with our partners. <laughs> we talk to our dogs, right? You were yes. like, oh, you don't know how I'm feeling today. <laughs> so we have all conversations. I'm so that's why I love dogs. They are your companions. So I will never... As much as I love them, I don't want them to be able to speak like us. I don't mm -hmm. want them to tell us secrets. We want to keep it private between us. What happens in our bedroom stay between it us. <laughs> so listen, I want to have you experienced, like, you know what he does? I get up at four in the morning every morning. He says, I don't sleep well. And he'll get up because I got up and it's too early. So I send him back to bed. He won't go. So what he does is he sits in his bed there. He eats every morning at 6.45 a.m. And in the evening, is at 5.45. I mean, nonstop. Don't ask me why that time, but that's the time I give it to him. Of course, we have a hard time with the, cha the, cha uh, the change of time. We have a hard yes. time. But, and I tell him, no, he'll go to his bed. But I got to tell you, at 6.45, he gets off that bed. And I, for some reason, he knows the timing of his food. I could go to the room to do my art and close the door. He will go in there to my door and whine and scratch the door because it's time to feed him. And then the other thing that he does is he'll, he knows when Fab is coming from work. All day he's doing his thing. He's sleeping in the bed. I take him up, blah, blah, blah. But at 5.30, he stands in this couch looking at that door. And if 6 o'clock comes, 6.30, you see him at the door just whining like, where is he? Where is he? Where is he? Where is he? Animals... I feel like are really close to what like humans. And I think that's why we're so attached. I'm not saying he's human, but I think 
we have that kind of like, what I love about dogs is the love that they have for their owners. And if I was lucky enough, I would just have dogs. I would just have dogs because they are, they give you so much love. And I don't think, I, I don't think people who don't have animals understand how beautiful it is to have an animal, right? And I've seen these people say, oh, a dog, I will never have a dog. Then they get a dog and they're like, oh my God, I never realized how much I love my dog. It's yes. not a dog, that's your kid, right? Yes. And until you have an animal, you're not going to experience that. You're not going to experience yes. love. You're not going to experience that connection. You're not gonna. You're yeah. not gonna get to experience that level of love, unconditional love. Yeah. You know, rainy sun, sun is out, rain. No matter you down, puppy sick, they are faithful. They'll be waiting there for you. No matter if you go for. A, if sometimes I, I laugh because sometimes I just go down to the laundry to put the laundry in the laundry machine. That's what three floors down. By the time I come back, I'm going to think that I left it for, for weeks. For weeks, <laughs> yes. yes. And I'm like, I'm... I just went down to do laundry. I just told you I'm coming back. I'm doing laundry. I'll be right you, back. Right? I just told you. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the beauty of uh, having yeah. a pet. You know, you get that reaction that in that unconditional love that no other human being is going to be able to do the same. Ruben, I don't know if you see, you see how calm he is? Huh? <laughs> Do you see how calm he is? He's chill. You know, he's on TV. <laughs> very calm. He's very calm. And that's why he keeps me calm. You know, animals, um, and he wasn't trained. I don't know how he became, um, I think more because every time, like, I cried years ago and I would cry, I would pick him up. And I think he learned that, oh, daddy's sad. I need to be. So here, right? I never pick him up like this a lot, like unless he tells me to pick him up. So this to him is like he's in heaven, but I have him That's here. That's his comfort zone. He wants to be like this all day, and I can't do this all day. <laughs> I walk around the house and I'm trying to clean. You he, can. We want to do it all day, but we can. We got all the things to do. <laughs> I mean, I do, I do everything to it. Look, look, look. I put him like a little baby. And I go, oh, my little baby. You know? <laughs> and, and he just... <laughs> He lets me do whatever I want to do to him, right? As long as you're spoiling him, he, he's going to love it. I would love it, too, if I was there. <laughs> yeah, he's like the most... He, I mean, I know a lot of people have beautiful animals, and I've seen very well-behaved animals. And I love when people have animals, and they they train their animals. They, they treat them well. If you can't tr have an animal and treat them well, please don't have them. Please don't have them. That's I, true. You know, I was talking to my friend Maria. And she was like, every time I go out, people ask me about the dog and how cute and they want a dog and how to prepare. And um, we started this thing, you know, we usually go and tell people, oh, they're beautiful, they're fun, you go to the park. But I started by telling people the truth. And I switched my way of approaching when people ask me, so uh, what's, why, how should I have a dog? How should I care? Uh, am I ready? I'm like, well, if you have enough money in your bank account for an emergency. Yeah. And if you have the time right. to dedicate, to walk him twice a day, feed him what he needs to eat, not when you want to. Yeah. You know, when they're hungry, their time to eat is their time to eat. So whatever you're doing, you got to come back home and feed that pet because it's your responsibility. If right. you want to travel, if you're a person that likes to travel and yeah. be on a plane going places, you know, maybe a dog right now is not for you. So yeah. instead of always uh, telling people when they ask me, uh, all these questions, I always tell them the truth. You need money. You need time. It's a commitment of 15 years. Dog gets yeah. sick, and they get sick quickly. You don't realize it. Yeah. <laughs> One day they're fine. One day they go down sick. And the yeah. visits to the uh, doctors are not cheap. Yeah. I mean, yeah. this weekend, I only spent, what was, I spent $400 yeah. at the vet office. And he waived my visit in. And I had to take a cab. That was about $60, $70 on cab. So Where do you see? I him? spent $600 there in one visit. Where do you take him? Mm -hmm. This time I took him at Riverdale Animal Hospital because that was the only place that they have uh, available to take him. So they so saw him right away. I, so that, I think that's one of the things I always tell people, try to always have at least, if you're not into the pet insurance, because not everybody's into pet insurance, sometimes you don't cover certain things. 
But I always try to have at least a thousand dollars there saved for that quick emergency that can happen. And remember, as the dog get older, the more they're going to need more care, the more attention they're going to need. So it's not going to get easier. No, it's, like <laughs> no, it's not going to get easier. It's a process at the beginning. When we get a dog, everything is fun, everything is happy. Nobody tells you what's going to happen at the end. Yeah. And sometimes yeah. that's something that I learned on my own. I yeah. went through four times in less than a year. And that's how, why, why, that's one of the reasons that made me change my approach to certain questions, to be honest to people and tell them the reality. And the I reality is how... that we love them, we get attached to them, we can care for them, but they're animals. They're not going to live as long as humans. And at some point, we got to learn how to say goodbye to them. That doesn't mean we're going to forget them. That's the part. We got to let them go because their purpose in life uh, yeah. and with us is ended. Yeah. You know, their job has ended and maybe there's another dog waiting to come in and right. take over and complete your your journey in this life. Right. So sometimes we get, I like, I went to a depression. I cried for, for years. Oh, um, yeah. It was horrible. But now I look back and I go back to the little box where I have all uh, King Tut's outfits and I'm able to look at them. I'm able to look at his pictures. I'm able to shared with my friends when they come over oh this was king tut there's no tears no more but it's a process and um we have to be ready for all of that we need money we need to have time we need to be mentally prepared and live in a reality because sometimes we go in this dream like they're never going to go and then when it comes that time it hurts and like, it really hurts. we all I, know right <laughs> i know that this one i'm like i'm like you but at least give me two more years. Like I just talked to him, like, give me more time, right? Because you don't want them to leave. But I wanted to give some advice for people out there. First of all, I'm not a believe. I mean, it's fine. People want to go buy animals, go buy animals. I'm not the time to buy animals because I see people buying animals and then they can't, they don't know how to take care of them. And then you know where this animal ends up? In a rescue place. And so what happens is, you can go to a rescue place if you want a, a pure breed and find a pure breed. Sonny and Cher were from a rescue from the Humane Society of New York. And I got to tell you that I wanted to share with you, you go there, they're funded by donors. So I, we were lucky enough that Sonny and Cher are donor sponsored. So we basically, when they saw us, they said, you're going to be great parents. We're going to let them be donor sponsored because they knew we had our handful because Sonny and Cher couldn't be separated when we met them. And they wouldn't, they wouldn't let you adopt one. You had to adopt both they, because they were so close. So they are very inexpensive if you go there. Uh, and they do have adoptions as well, but they have a lot of doctors and they have very professional people. It's down in the city. Humane Society of New York is on 59th Street and 2nd Avenue. But I got to tell you, I see a lot of people that can't afford it, and I send them there. I said, listen, because they care about the animal. This is not a business. So when you go to a hospital, yeah, the hospital is going to help your animal. But remember, this is about making money. So when you go to a place like a rescue place, who, and then you donate, this is the, the right place to give money to. You know, So we do donations, yearly donations. We do a nice donation. And, um, and I got to tell you, this is a, one of the best places. So if you ever want an animal, you can find a pure breed. Because a lot of people during the holidays, especially, they find their kids. Oh, let me get him a, a Bichon. Let me get him a, a big um, Labrador, right? And then they can't yes, deal yes. with it. And it ends up in the humane society. And then, that's how we got them because they're pure breed. These two little chihuahuas are, are pure breed. And they were tiny. They were 60. They were like six months old, you know? So there's good the, options. There's good options. I always tell people, try to go to shelters, find first. I mean, every, it's up to you. At the end of the day, it's up to you where you get your pet. Yeah. We understand that. But we also want to try to give opportunities. If you can go to a shelter, give a it's chance, go in there. Right. Maybe you make a connection. Maybe you take a pet home. Uh, some people like to do breeders. So just specific yeah. breed for different reasons. They right. want certain quality of dog. And they go to a breeder. All the people just buy at pet stores. And we all know where those dogs, mostly of those dogs come from, they come from puppy mills 
Um, I, I and uh, then not uh, raised in the best conditions. Uh, so that's why we tell people try to adopt. I've done it both. I'm always honest. Yeah. <laughs> I no, tell I people I have purchased dogs uh, from pet stores. I have rescued dogs from the street. I have rescued dogs from shelter. So I have done everything. I also had, um, what I say, uh, foster pet. But one thing I never done, get rid of my dogs. Yeah, me neither. Whether I purchase, whether I rescue them, they are part of my family and I take care of them to the end. There's no going back to a shelter. That doesn't yeah. exist. I yeah. don't I, I learn to control my impulse. A lot of people get a dog um, by impulse, by pressure. Mm -hmm. Um holidays, my kid wants a dog. I want to stop him from asking me. I don't want to hear. And they go buy a dog without doing the research and knowing what they're getting. Yeah. Just to keep that child quiet for a couple of months. Forget and then him. The and then forget that, that, that he's going to go to school. And he, he's not going to be walking the dog. He's yeah. not going to be grooming the dog. The right. kid is a kid. They want to play Nintendo. They want to watch TV. They yeah. want to be with it. But they don't want that responsibility. Right. And that's how at the end, the parents realize, oh, uh, what I got myself into. Now I'm working. I got to take care of my kids. I got to drive this. Now I got a dog. And then the that they the could have thought about it before. <laughs> you know anybody who wants a dog? Oh my God, I'm going to have to take them to the rescue. <laughs> so people, if you're getting a dog, sometimes when the idea comes into your mind, just step back for a minute. Let her uh, sit there yeah. for a couple of weeks. Uh, look at the cons and pros. Let it yeah. marinate a little bit, and then you make that decision. Because if you rush into it, you go, you're gonna be <laughs> up for some surprises. <laughs> yeah, and it's a big commitment. Like I want another, oh, that... I want another one, but Fabio says no. He said, "Think about it. This is another 15 years of our life that we have to give to another animal. So I mean, it's hard when we want to go on vacation, like you said. I have somebody that comes and stays here in the home. I will not leave him anywhere." I'm going to leave him in a room. That's just me. Because I kind of feel bad that I don't want him to feel like we abandoned him. So I have a cousin of mine who I pay him and he stays here and, and he loves him. And when we come back, it's like, oh, we were away for a day. Right? He doesn't realize because he's left in a good place. You know, but other than that, I can't travel with him because of his heart. So Not only that, it. but you see, you live in my home. I did that with my other four dogs because I couldn't travel with four dogs. At one point, I almost had five dogs. <laughs> wow. But now, I travel with my dog, and I also uh, I want people to understand this. Just because you travel with the dog doesn't mean uh, you don't have responsibilities. Because yeah. you're traveling with your dog, you have a big responsibility to make sure that everything goes smooth through that travel. Plus, you're going to try to enjoy your vacation, but you have to babysit at the same time because you have a dog. So that's the, that means that there's some tourist attractions that you won't be able to go with your dog. There's some hotels and they may not want you. There's some family members that they not want a dog in their home. So this is a, a, a lot of things that people have to think about it before making that big decision. Yeah. Um, don't feel bad. Not everybody is is uh, capable of having a dog. It's not for everybody. It's not. And that's something that we have to understand, no matter how many people tell you, oh, dogs are great. If you're not ready, you're not ready. Don't get into that commitment. Be honest. You're gonna save a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of trouble for a dog that's gonna get attached to you, yeah. and and love you, and then you're gonna send him to a dark yeah. place, and you never know if you're ever gonna be happy so again by the same home. They're so adorable that you see them, you're like, I have to have them, right? <laughs> you're not thinking at the moment. Yeah, they, they look how cute they are now. They're gonna get big, and sometimes you get these little dog thinking, oh, look how cute, and all of a sudden that dog is like this tall. <laughs> and that's a problem. <laughs> yeah, that's one thing. Also, you know, that's another thing that a lot of people uh sometimes uh like for example, let's say I go to Puerto Rico and I see a little dog in the street, or they're selling dogs in the streets over there, and you go buy a dog, and they tell you, oh no, he's gonna be, oh no, he's gonna be four pounds. Don't worry about it. Yes. He's gonna be a tiny chihuahua, and you're over there. Oh my God, I got the perfect dog. I'm going to New York with my dog. Seven months later, your chihuahua turns into a cow. It's like this. Yes. <laughs> and then you start looking at him, and he looks like a chihuahua, but he looks like a poodle, but he looks like a pit bull. And you don't know what you got. <laughs> so people don't make those mistakes. 
don't because, make those mistakes. Yes, doll, because all dogs are born little. <laughs> and right? cute. I never seen a little puppy, ugly puppy. I never seen an ugly puppy. Never. Like <laughs> there's these little white dogs that I love that are beautiful, but I feel like when they get older, they're not as beautiful. And remember, you're gonna take that dog's face. You look like your dog. So if you get yourself an ugly dog, just remember you're gonna be just as ugly. It doesn't mean that you can't get an ugly dog because it's- That's why I only get Pomeranians now. <laughs> now I want a Pomeranian, you don't know. I, right. saw I don't do other dogs. I only do cute dogs because dogs look like their owners. So I'm gonna do Pomeranians for the rest of my life. I love Pomeranian now because of you. Especially <laughs> because you dress them up and they don't care. They're like, oh yeah, let me put on sunglasses. This you one know, it's amazing. It's one of those breeds that um, I learned about them through King Todd. That was my first Pomeranian, the one that they abandoned at the pet shop and I rescued him. Really? Because I used to be a big poodle lover. Dana, that was my breed, poodles, haircut, you know, hairstyles, so all of that. But then I met uh, King Todd and I saw a, a whole different side of a dog. And the Pomeranian breed, it tends to be very attached to you, very affectionate. They want to please you 24 7. They're there from the minute you wake up to the minute you go to bed. They want to be with you. That's their life. They live for the owners. Yeah. And also, they're jealous because they like one owner. They don't like to share the love with your partner. And that's a problem that I'm having at home now with my partner and I'm moon because when he comes from work, he gets very nasty, very jealous, yeah. very feisty. And I have to keep an eye on him. And I got to be very careful with that interaction when they come in the house together. <laughs> oh, my God. Interesting. See, this is another thing you have to consider, right? If you have a child, a baby, and then you bring this animal in who's falling in love with you, and you're taking all this attention on the baby, you never know. Not all dogs, like, please don't take this as a wrong way. I think you want to uh, get a dog, get a dog. You want to buy a dog, buy a dog. My, my concern is that you love that dog. That's all I care. Take care of it, right? I've seen people on the street when I'm walking and they're talking to the dog. Like, it's like, come on, you SOB. And I'm like looking and the dog is so adorable. The dog don't understand that you call them an SOB. All they don't know. They don't know. Because you know I'll kick your ass. And I'm like, why are you talking <laughs> it's to true, It's true. It's true. I see that all the time. Not only that, they also be pulling the dog. Let's go. Let's go. And I tell people. Well, why you went out with the dog? You took the dog for a walk, right? Yeah. So let the dog do his walk. He take you where he want to go. That's his yeah. time. They walk you. You don't walk the dog. The dog yeah, that's walk. what a moon walks you. Everybody tell me, oh, a moon walks you. I'm like, yes, it's his yes. walk. This one he walks takes you whatever he wants. So as long as he don't, he don't pick up anything from the floor or or, or, or lick any pee or anything. He can go anywhere. Yeah, you have to watch them when you walk in there. Yeah, you watch that you make sure everything is okay, but just let the dog enjoy his walk. Yeah. yeah. Pushing him and, and doing that walk when you have to go to work right away and in a rush, that's not good for your dog. No. It's stressful. It's not a it's not a walk that he's gonna enjoy. Exactly. Like he so they need time to release, to do the, the the to use the bathroom. So they you know it's a process for them. They gotta sniff for the dog, they have to know who's around. <laughs> so, like, so people, like, when you walk your dogs, give them their time. That's their time, not your time. <laughs> and he pulls me. Like if I'm walking him, and he stops, and I don't realize that he stopped, and I want to, I'm like, come on. He's like, hell no. You gotta wait until I sniff this. You know. So they're the yeah. boss. Of us. They're the boss of us. They really are. No, that's a, that's a little time. You know, we they don't they're not always out. So if you give him a 30 minute walk, let them enjoy those 30 minutes being themselves. If they want to go and nip some butt from one of the dog, let them be dogs. Yeah. You know, that's yeah. what they do. That's what they enjoy. That's how they know each other by the smell, you know, it's smelling their bodies. Ruben, what I learned, um, and this was told by a, a dog owner said to me, she said, I don't mind that your dog comes to my dog, but you should ask first so because you never know what type of dog that dog is so now when i'm walking my dog and i see another dog i've seen people that walk away you know, a, who knows maybe that dog is gonna bite them because you never yes. know so when i'm getting out close to somebody i said is it okay if I, my dog approaches your dog and they're like oh okay 
But I've also had moments where I've said, can my dog, and they're like, no. I mean, they get a and you sick. cannot take it personal. You can't, because maybe that dog is going to attack your dog. Or maybe like that these dog past, this, dog. these few days, this few days I woke a moon, he was sick. So I wasn't letting no dog come near him. Exactly. So all his friends were like, what happened to him? I was like, just keep your dog away because he's sick. Yeah. I don't want my dog to get anything, but I don't want also your dog to get anything. So I'll give him a fun. week. Next week, they'll be back playing, fun. Yeah. And, he, and he's done. But yeah, that's a thing that we have to understand that not every dog is friendly just because they look cute or funny or, or either sometimes they're friendly with one dog, but they may not like the next one. Yes. So it, yeah. it's not about dogs. And sometimes also I tell people one thing that I always tell people, not every human being likes dogs. And yes. just because we are pet owners yes. doesn't give us the right to force our dog into them. Yes. That's very important. And a lot of people, I see them, they get on the train, they put the dog there, and they don't care if that maybe that person has allergy, has phobia, had a bad experience with a dog. And yeah. you're making that person feel so uncomfortable because and you are so into your own self yeah. that you forget, that. you forget to be a human being and, and courteous to other people and, and try to be... Uh, mm -hmm. Think about all the situations that we're not the only ones that share the trains, the parks, and the streets. There's all the people. I had a person here that I used to walk down in front of my building. And um, when I have to own my dogs, she hated the dogs. I used to her in my ear, she used to say, oh, that nasty dog. Blah, 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 blah. But then as, as time went by, I noticed she had some mental issues. Mm-hmm. So I try to, when I see her, I try to avoid the conflict because yeah. I know it's something that she cannot control. I don't know what experience she had. And that's yeah. how I manage that situation with her. And sometimes I see her without the dogs and I say hi to her. But when I have my dogs, I try to avoid to put her on that, right. that environment that she don't feel comfortable. So why am I going to do that to somebody? That's not fair either. So we have to be create a balance when it comes to dog owners and non-dog owners. That not everybody likes. I don't uh, like big dogs. There's no way I'm going to get a big dog. I will never get a big dog. And my husband wants a pit bull. He wants a Labrador. Like, he wants big dogs. And I'm like, there's no way. You get a big dog, we're breaking up. I'm not <laughs> doing Look at that. I'm scared. I'm scared of big dogs. And I go to my aunt. I'm scared. No, and I know this. Personally, I know this because I saw that time at Halloween when that big dog was running around. And, and you your face me. change, your whole demeanor change. You yes. are a whole different person. It kills me. Like it, 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 I, I don't know. Maybe something happened to me as a kid. Maybe I remember a Saint Bernard knocking me down from the back in my cousin's house. I don't think that affected me, but there's just some because, regardless, they're animals. They're unpredictable. They're the nicest. Sometimes part. you know. Sometimes it's it's also things that our parents tell us when we're little. Be careful. He's gonna bite you. And all yes. those little things, you don't realize that you're telling your, your kid is creating fear. It's creating a fear that maybe at that moment won't show, but maybe 10 years, 20 years later, you're mm -hmm. going to be, oh, I'm afraid of dogs. I don't, I can't really trust them. Yeah, I don't so like... I we always have to be careful how we communicate with people. And, and uh, yeah, because it can cause problems at yes, the end. Close to my aunt's house, she has a black pit bull. She has a... Uh, I just mentioned that dog, uh, the big dog, the big dog that slobbers a lot, the St. Bernard. St. Bernard. And they have a little, uh, not a poodle, but terrier, one of these things. That dog is like so strong, the little one. Like she's the boss, right? <laughs> the other two are males. <laughs> and that pit bull, when he sees Fabio, he just jumps on Fabio. He literally tears the t-shirt off and out of <laughs> There is no way I'm getting near these that, that dog. So there, there's an, an example, right? I might have a dog, but I might not want to be close to your dog. Yes. And the street, I used I didn't walk him before because if I saw a pit bull, again, there's some wonderful pit bulls out there. And I've seen people been with their pit bulls and friends going over. I'm not doing it. But if I, with my dog, and I see him, automatically, I pick up my dog. It's like, you're like a snack to that dog. You're coming up with me. 
And I'm glad this is not one of those little ones that barks at the big dog because they think they're... <laughs> no, but you always have to be careful because we don't know every dog that we're going to see yes. in the street. We don't know their background. We don't know if they had any trauma before with all the pets. You don't know if that dog was attacked and that's why he came aggressive. So that's you can it. see my arm. I don't know if you guys can see it, that bite that I got a few years ago. Yes, remember, I remember. That I had to get in between two dogs fighting. <laughs> Yeah, but you did that. So okay. you uh and that created uh you believe it or not, uh he has created some fear at certain dogs yeah. when I see that. And I'm a dog lover and I'm a dog groom and I deal with all kinds of dogs all, all my life. And after that happened, I think the way I approach certain dogs, uh sometimes I see them, sometimes I avoid them, depending on the way they look. Um and it's not because I don't like them, it's because I went to a trauma a trauma experience. Right. I, and it was uh, at the moment when I reacted, I wasn't thinking. But then once your body and your mind cools down and you just see what happened, you're like, oh, wow. Right. And, and you, uh, I've always been a dog, dog, dog lover and I always try to work with animals aggressive or not. I'm not afraid of them. But I also learned that they can do certain damage. Right. And, and, uh, and cool. they they're After strong. Um, they have an animal instinct that we cannot control no matter how much we train them. They are animals. They're going to react. And um, mm -hmm. in this case, that was his reaction. Um, mm -hmm. Me trying to get him, the other dog away from him and then trying to secure him. The dog was already in that m m mindset of mm -hmm. aggression. And I tried to help. And um, I end up being the one getting the big bite <laughs> that day it ended in the hospital. So uh, we have to be very careful. Animals are not toys. They're not teddy bears. They have feelings. They can react different ways, no matter how much you train them. Um, right. The environment around them uh, has a big role on that. Yeah, even a child is going to react. Still, right? If a, a child takes the dog and put it still, the dog is going to bite you. He's protecting himself, right? You can't yeah. blame the dog. Your child pulled his tail, right? That happened yes. to him you. He did something worse. He went up to the dog in the back with a finger. So, of course, the dog is going to bite him, and he was too. So, it's not <laughs> the slow. But anyway, Ruben, I want to go back to your Miss Universe. Yes, yes, tell me. So, we, we totally went on a whole different trip. <laughs> but, but this I, is all good information because something that you experienced and I experienced. Education on a lot of, like, for, when you said you don't just go to any dog up or in the subway. I've done that. I've gone on the subway, I take him out of his bag, I sit him on the, and now I, it's true, the person right next to me could be allergic, could be scared. So I learned that from you today, right? So this is very informative. Uh, yes, but anyway, yes, yes, yes. This universe. <laughs> <And it's pretty laughs> I know he's the best one. <laughs> Everybody says their dog is the best. <laughs> so please vote for my little sonny. He's like amazing. That's correct. We have the natural beauty competition where uh -huh. the public has the opportunity to vote for the favorite. In this case, if you're Puerto Rican, you're into Puerto Rico, Mr. Puerto Rico, that's the guy you're going to vote for. It's starting August 4th. Uh, the competition is going to run for three weeks. You get the opportunity to vote once a week for your favorite canine, natural beauty. Remember, guys, uh, we are judging the natural beauty of the dog. Dogs mm -hmm. are going to be naked. No accessories, no bowls, no jewelry. Um, I want you guys to concentrate on the beauty of the dog, no matter what's around them, the backgrounds, the toys they put up front, whatever trick the parents want to use, just <laughs> concentrate on that dog because we're looking for natural beauty. We want to mm -hmm. see the way they are, uh, the way the, the hair is, oh. shines and glows and all the beautiful things about dog besides a dress, you know? Right. <laughs> So Sonny's going to send a message to his uh, fans. I know a lot of people entered not too long ago, and I know they came from your Facebook because I check everybody. So I know um, they're watching, Sonny. They know. They know my baby's out there, and they're all watching, and they're rooting for him, and they think he's adorable, and as you can hey, see, just, he's adorable here. Just vote like he's like Casa de los Famosos, okay? Just vote, yeah. vote, vote. Let's call him Maripili <laughs> for now. <laughs> <laughs> now, so now you've seen all the contestants. This is our third year. Mm -hmm. Oh, by the way, 
where where I put that? Oh my goodness! I want to show you the beautiful necklace. You you know that they're taking they're going home with these beautiful pieces. Oh my god! I saw that. It's beautiful. And that was these are by... gorgeous. Who made this? Hey, Furky Fancy. Beautiful. I think it's stunning. And the boys. Not only that beautiful, but the inside is so well made. No, no, you could tell it's beautiful. Is that for the female dog? This is for the female. We have a bow, bow tie. Uh, version for the boy. I saw the one for the boy. Yes. So they are amazing. She donated these pieces. We also have the lady, uh, Beach for Royalty. She also donated the crowns for the boys and the girls. Really? Yeah. So, we, you know, this is not only about Ruben. We have, I'm bringing, I'm trying to bring in all these uh, amazing designers and talented uh, talented people that work in the dog industry to come together and um, and do something for the animals in need because this is not for uh, Sonny or for Ruben or for any other dog. This is for yeah. Yorkie 911. And mm -hmm. uh, that's the main goal of this is helping dogs in need. And that's why you guys join the competition because you want to have fun, but at the yeah. same time give to those that need it the most. And that's why 21 dogs have joined this year. They say yes to Yorkie 911. They say mm -hmm. yes to finding home for these dogs, giving them a better life, a second chance. And that's why we're here. Okay, exactly. it's not about us being on the internet, doing interviews. Uh, all that is fun, it's creative, but at the end of the day, uh, the main yeah, goal yeah. is to help that's those animals in need. Uh, is Yorkie, Yorkie 911 all, all Yorkies? No, no, they're not all Yorkies. Actually, Yorkie 911, uh, they started with Yorkies, but they uh, do all small breeds. Uh, and one thing about them that I love, that they like to work with senior dogs. They like to give the opportunity to those dogs that people say, oh, no, that's 12 years old, 15 years old. We don't want them. But Yorkie 911, they try to work with those dogs and give them a little chance, a second chance to live a, a, a good life. Uh, for mm -hmm. the past, last five, six years that they have. So that's one thing I love about them. Um, I've seen their work in person. I, I so uh, not only though they, they do that, they also transport dogs uh, from Puerto Rico. If you go to Puerto Rico and um, you're traveling to Puerto Rico and there's a dog that needs to come to New York, and if you can bring them, they pay for the flight. The only thing you have to transport the dog, make sure he comes with you on the plane and you give it to the person here. And that's another way that people can help. So when you go out to Puerto Rico, you can always call your kid and one one say, hey, yeah, guys, you need a transport. I'm going to be in Puerto Rico. I can bring the dog back with me and then I can give it to you at the, at the airport. That's very good to know. For when yes, I yes. I did it once with them. It was an amazing experience. Really? Yeah, that's a great idea. Yeah, I did it what? once. Uh, because I have, uh, I think I'm, who I had, I had a, a moon with me, and Thurman didn't have a dog. So I told Thurman, well, you don't have a dog, so let's put the dog on you, and then we can take another dog with us and give it to the rescue, and we travel with our pet. So that's what we did. And you save a life, because especially- We did a little work. We, Puerto Rico we did a Puerto Rican baby. Yeah, <laughs> even the hurricanes, all those dog animals that were homeless, right? They got lost with the hurricane, the owners never found them and or didn't want them anymore. And I remember that a lot of people were saving all these dogs and bringing them to New York. So are they like a shelter as well or or can you adopt? They do a lot of fostering. They have a lot of people that foster their dog into their final home. Okay, and do you can you adopt from them? Yes, you can adopt. You can visit Yorkie 911 and they have the list, a list of dogs that are ready for adoption. Oh, great, great. It's they got great. different breeds, different uh, age range from the youngest to the oldest, uh, Maltese, Chihuahuas, all kinds of dogs come in. And um, they're, they, I like them. I, I think they're doing a good job. Listen, um, Ruben, I, want, I wanted to ask you another question because I think answering this question, it's good because people can share this video and maybe get us more dogs to compete so they can also help Yorkie 911, I think, with a, when they um, hear what, we're, what you're doing. Right for these for these for this place and for the animals, I think a lot of people will do it. This is not something that's crazy, and you have to go spend all this money. This is just about bringing your dog, sharing your dog with other people, right, and having fun with it at the same time. Like you said, we are helping a a I forgot the word 
Yo quiero un one. Una asociación, or a, 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 a place, right? Night, New York, in New York. And, um, and I think we could get more people because people say, how do I get them in? How do they get them? And they think it's like this big, like, oh, Miss Universe, and I'm going to get a prize of a million dollars and a crown. That's not what it is, right? But it's fun. Like, I really have well, your fun. prize, at the end of the day, your prize is going to be that you're helping a right. dog that really needs a home, that needs medical care. That's the big prize. That's the big reward that you're always going to take with you. And you see, sometimes good. because uh, we're not doing one dog. I mean, we are 21 contestants together. It's so that can cool. that means that's a surgery for a dog. That means that's medication for a dog. A wow. second chance, and that's what we're doing. I know we all want prizes, recognition. It feels great. I understand right. that. But right. the main goal of the whole competition is to help the animals in need. That's why you I know, said that's the, that's the main goal. My job is uh, work, get you guys to participate and put the show together for you guys to enjoy and to spread awareness about rescuing and not only rescuing, but like we talked uh, before, to make sure if you get a dog, be responsible and finish your duty with that dog to the end. Okay, right. not just halfway there, you got all and get rid of it. Doesn't work like that. Right. <laughs> I agree with you. We're on the same page. So people can participate. It don't matter if you get a, a dress from Walmart or a dress made by a designer or oh, if you yeah, have you had your gun and you started gluing your dress at home. It don't matter. We're not looking for that. <laughs> also, you had posted something about designers that make um, outfits for the animals. Can you share a little bit more of that? Because I, well, I was trying I want to reach one of them. Well, I, I, as you know, uh, I'm also a designer. The only thing, unfortunately, I cannot participate in design for you guys for the competition right. because it's not fair and they're going to kill me. <laughs> right. Right. So, but uh, I've been in the uh, industry of dog fashion already for over, I think about 15 years since right. I started. I learned uh, on my own by breaking sewing machines and needles. <laughs> 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 and uh, and I grew and I, I met different um, designers that gave me advice in the industry. I have uh, my uh, good friend, Ara Nieve, who was one of the person that started this uh, thing about fashion uh, many, many years ago. And I con we consider her the mom, the mother of dog fashion. Mm -hmm. And she's the one who uh, opened the doors for me. Uh, and I'm very grateful for her. But and from there, I started uh, meeting different designers. Each one is unique on what they do. They have their own different styles uh, and creativity. And I learned from each one of them. I learned so much. And we became a family. Okay. okay. This is not only a competition, but we are friends. I mean, we see each other when we go out to the city. We meet up for dinner, lunch. We bring the dog. We do doggy parties. We meet up at the birthday so this is not only a competition. At the end of the day, you're, you're creating a family of dogs. Yes. Um, and in this family, we have designers. We have doctors, veterinarians. We have people that are groomers. We have all different branches from the industry. And we all come together and we share our knowledge between mm -hmm. us. And we learn. And that's what we're trying to share with you guys. So that's why we have designers that you can contact me. Send me a message if you want something fancy whether it's for the Miss Universe pageant or if you're having a wedding and you want your dog to be part of that wedding, you can mm -hmm. reach out to me or to one of the designers and we can create something specially for that moment for the dog's birthday, your birthday, you have a special theme party. Whatever idea you have, uh, the designers can create it for you, a specific for your dog. Mm -hmm. And um, if you guys are interested in participating, uh, you can always reach me. I can put you in contact. Uh, give you a list of designers and you can check them out and you decide on your own if you want to uh, try one of them. I yeah. have Miss Trinidad and Tobago, huh? um, the pit bull. Uh, she is uh, for the first time and she's getting some outfits done by a designer. Really? So yes. let me. Um, I can't wait to see that big pit bull with a big canal. No. See, that's what I'm telling you. It's, it, it can be very competitive. Now, I won one year from you guys in one of the events a pink beautiful dress. It was was that from one of these designers? I think. It I was a think if it was one of mine or one of the designers. 
It was a big pink with a lot of stones and it had a pink bow that went on the head. And it was just stunning, 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 stunning. You and won it on the raffle? I won in the raffle, yeah. Yeah, that was uh, that was uh, from the designers. So that designer I want to contact. I would love to contact that designer because I, unfortunately, my, my dog, because of the heart, the one who died, when I put it on her, it was a, a total disaster. Her heart was <laughs> falling 100 miles per hour. And when I went to the bed, you cannot put her in no pageant. You can't stress her out. You can't. He's a little bit better. Like when we, before we started, his heart was going 100 miles per hour because he's not knowing why am I, are you putting me on top of this table, right? Because he's never been on top of the table. But now I don't feel his heart at all. Look, he's so calm. He's like, ready? But I gave that dress. It was so sad when I had to give her clothes away. I gave it to my neighbor and she went in a Halloween costume and the dog was bigger. I don't, she added like stuff so it would look bigger <laughs> on the dog. And she won. She Look won the that. dress. Yeah. I so. think, I think, uh, I don't know, in my opinion, I think we should have that special dress made for your dog. Yeah. Uh, for that memory, that photo, that unique yeah. moment that you want to share. I, th I tell people, go for it. I have, personally, I had a client that did, I had to design a outfit for, his, for her wedding. And, uh, and I did it. And I matched the wedding. They took the wedding photos with the dog. And it's a beautiful moment, especially for dog owners that they're so close to us, to share yes. that moment and that photo that will last forever. And they look adorable. Look they look adorable. They really do. And the thing with uh, the the outfits that are uh, designers, they are uh, made for your dog, perfectly measured for your dog. So yeah. it's not going to be like hanging from one side right. or your dog trying to take it off because you don't feel uncomfortable. They're yes. just perfectly measured for your dog. We try to use materials that are comfortable for your pet, that right. won't scratch the skin. We have to think about uh, how we decorate it, the stuff that we, the pieces that we put that make sure the dog don't eat any of that mm -hmm. stuff. So it's not just making a dress. Right. <laughs> yeah. So there's a lot of components that comes together when we, all right. designers, create their pieces. And I think it's always a good option. I think it's always fun. It's unique. And, uh, and, and it's also a way to show your own personality. Yeah. My little baby. Well, I think I think how long we've been in this conversation. <laughs> it's, it's very interesting, though. It's been a month. I loved it. Uh, we cover a lot of topics that I think everybody yeah. needed to know. A lot of good information. Uh, I think we covered pretty much everything. And now we have to make sure people are following our uh Facebook group, Mr. and Mr. Universe K9, because uh, September 28th, we're going to find out who are the winners of this year's uh, competition, who's going to be crowned. And if I'm not mistaken, I think the Miss Universe this year is the same day. Is it? Uh, that, that's what I'm hoping. So we're going to have two parties. The dogs are going to start at 6 p.m. And then we're going to have the Miss Universe coming on. But we, who cares about them? Yeah. This is <laughs> it's not about us, the dogs. <laughs> So anyway, look so, at Mr. Universe one more time so you guys get a look at how beautiful and calm he is. Right? Can I get a kiss? Oh, look at all oh, the Look at that. Pure love. Yeah, he's adorable. All right, guys. So this is all for today's uh, uh, section of Canine Conversations. We have Mr. Puerto Rico. Uh, we love to talk. We know each other. So that's why this conversation was smooth and long because we had a lot of information for you guys to to uh re to give you guys about caring for your dog preparing for the pageant being a parent how they help us all the information we cover in this segment that's why it's so amazing it's a great segment i'm gonna go back and i'm gonna watch it again <laughs> to make sure i got everything so Me thank too. you sir uh hector for being with us thank, thank you, you. sonny um keep getting ready you're looking sharp on on the pictures you send me you're doing an amazing work keep going don't stop. I know it's going to get a little stressful as time gets closer. Hang yeah. in there. You guys got to this, okay? Because that's not the point. The point is not to stress them. The point is that they have fun, right? That's what we got to do. <laughs> that's anyway, right. thank you, Ruben. Thank you so thank much. You, thank you so much. And we're keeping touch. Maybe I have you um, a few days before the crowning night. I bring all the contestants to a Zoom 
and we can do a, a little Zoom party going on. You're all the facts in the countries. Yeah, Thank you for being with us, guys. Love you. Bye, guys. Bye.